Hey all, I'm Apoorva and welcome back to Videsified. This is our 12th video in the study in the USA series. In this video, we are going to talk all about I-20, the information it contains, the common mistakes that could happen in the I-20 and how to rectify them. So let's get to it. But before that, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you will be notified every time we upload a new video. In the last video, we talked about the breakdown of expenditure estimation and the financial documentation you could show to get your I-20. Once you submit these documents, the college reviews them and processes your I-20 within a week or two and ships it to your home address. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, colleges can send the I-20s over email also. Otherwise, they have to physically courier you the copy and you need to take that form to your visa interview. Some colleges even charge you for the shipping cost. Certificate of Eligibility for Non-Immigrant Student Status, also commonly known as Form I-20, is the most important document for an international student in the US. More than the visa stamp, I-20 is the one that determines how long you can stay in the country legally. As a student, you need I-20 for almost everything, like to open a bank account, to get your social security number, to apply for a driving license, to apply for employment, or for any official purpose, you need a valid I-20. So it is very important to make sure all the information on your I-20 is correct and up to date. What information does the I-20 contain? I-20 is a three-page document, and the first important thing you should notice is the service ID. After the 9-11 attacks, the US reformed its student visa program and introduced SAVP to keep a record of all foreign students in the US. Under this program, each college will issue a unique identification number to every admitted student. So if you get multiple admissions and multiple I-20s issued, you have multiple service numbers on your name, and that's totally fine. But you need to make sure that you are paying your service fees and submitting the DS-160 with the correct service ID from the college you want to join. The first section contains your personal information such as first and last name, date of birth, country of birth, citizenship, etc. And they need to exactly match with your passport. If you see any discrepancy, then reach out to your international office immediately and get it rectified. They will issue you a new I-20 with corrected information. On the right corner, you can see the type of visa you should be applying for. Next, you will see the school name as registered in the SAVP and the contact information of the school official. Following that, you can see the information about your program. Make sure the education level and the major mention matches with the program you applied for. Education level would be bachelor's for undergrad students, master's for graduate students, and doctorate for PhD students. Sometimes the major name can be different from what it is commonly called. Like computer science is called computer and informational science in some colleges and computational science in some colleges based on how they registered their program name with SAVP. Still, double check they have mentioned correct information on your I-20. Unless you are doing double majors, the major two field would be none. Also, verify the program start and end dates. This start date determines when you can apply for your visa, which is 120 days earlier. And the earliest admission date tells you when you can enter into United States, which is 30 days before the start date. The end date is usually an estimate of your last day of classes and you are eligible to do OPT after that. For some reason, if your estimated end date changes in the future, you can get it updated then. But for now, for undergraduate students, it should be around four years. For graduate students, it should be around two to two and a half years. And for PhD students, it's about six years. The next section is about the financials. On the left side, they give an estimation for nine months, which is fall and spring semesters together. And on the right side, they provide the breakdown based on the documentation you submitted. We have explained the breakdown of financials in the previous video, so please check that out. You can see the personal funds and funds from your sponsors and scholarship amounts on this right side. Make sure the estimate is correct for the program you are enrolled in. One of the common mistakes that can happen is if you get a scholarship or an assistantship after admission, they might miss to mention that in this section. So you need to get it corrected because the scholarships and assistantships on your I-20 creates a good impression to the visa officer and improves your chances of getting the visa. So don't forget to pay attention to this. Like you can see here, if you get a fee waiver and stipend, everything will be put under the departmental funding. The next section is for the attestation from the school. 
and the last section is for your signature after verifying all the above information. You have to get the parent or guardian signature only if you are below 18. Many people get it signed without noticing it. Uh, it's not a big mistake, but avoid it. If you're a bachelor student and under 18, you should get it signed. Otherwise, just leave it blank. You have to sign the I-20 before you appear for the visa interview. The second page is for the information about CPT and OPT employment authorization when you get it. So at this point, it will be blank. It also contains travel endorsements. With this signature, your I-20 is valid for traveling in and out of US for a year from the date of the signature. And the third page is a bunch of instructions for the students and schools. Along with the I-20, the admission packet would also contain useful information about the university. These resources help you with your class registrations, immunization, accommodation, fees payments, etc. And also information about any student organizations that will help your transition to be smooth. So don't forget to check that out. So that's all we have for today. Hope this is helpful. We will come up with more videos about what's next after I-20 very soon. Please let us know all your questions in the comments box below. We will reply and make videos answering all your questions. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep learning. Bye-bye.